so just confirm here. All right, we are live. So um, people will see a new kind of setup here, uh, overlay. It is a work in progress, um, so that is a thing. My dog is going crazy with her collar just as we start, uh, so that's always a wonderful thing. Um, looking for our turn tracker here. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, today um, we had a couple of last minute uh, player cancellations, so we are not going to be continuing the Tales of Exandria uh, campaign this week. Uh, we've had some uh, player real life issues and tech issues that have been uh, delaying the game a little bit. So we're just going to push back one more week and hopefully jump right back in on that. Um, so today uh, we have... Komi from our normal Saturday session who plays Siphona. Uh We have uh, Chthonian who plays Click, the all-powerful, the walking apocalypse, destroyer of worlds in our Saturday game. He is with us today. And we also have Anarba who plays Kunak in our Sunday Tal'Dorei games. Uh, Hello. As well. So they're not playing their retrospective characters from the Tal'Dorei setting. We've created new kind of level one characters. Um, this is not in Tal'Dorei, it's uh, not in Tag, this is actually going to be in my homebrew campaign setting um, of Kelowna. Uh, those of you who have watched and seen some of the older campaign vids, it is that same Kelowna. Uh, time frame, I'll try to briefly go into that, I don't want to go too much backstory because we are just trying to jump into some things here and uh, get started. So, um, does everybody have, let's see, uh, Anarba, can you add, add your PC's name on the PC token? Uh, if I can move it, let's see. Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, there is it. Yeah, it's the uh, bottom left one. There yep, go. yep, I found it. Okay, so... With that, um, okay, get this turn order kind of moved over here. Let's see that right here. And that. All right, guys. So we'll have you describe your characters. Uh, just one moment. Um, so again, Kelowna is our homebrew worlds. What you need to know here is recent time of events. Um, about over a year ago, uh, a major incident occurred that was called the Night of Jade Flame. Basically, the whole world was awash with a magical green fire that after which a lot of strange things happened. Um, some people began gaining magical abilities and powers that they never had. And some bits of the landscape begin to change and twist. Um, houses began to grow limbs and walk off. Um, entire towns, population um, just vanished overnight. Um, all kinds of weird, strange things have been going on with that. And more reports and stories of these events have been going on. And they've, a lot of scared town folk or uneasy town folk have hired these adventurers, these people that are brave enough to go into the wilderness, to go into those unsettled lands, to see what's going on, to put an end to rumors or to quell problems that have arise since this night of Jade Flame. You all are such adventurers. Now, um, let's see, with that, um, so, the group of you have been kind of, you've been hired to investigate the complaints of a couple of quote-unquote wizards 
who live on the edge of a small township, a little hamlet. Rumors abound from the town that these wizards have always been brewing up some sort of trouble or always something strange. Um, people have complained about the foulest of smells and stenches coming out of their chimney. Um, people go who think that they're up to no good. Necromancy is very frowned upon here. They've had a bad history. The world has had a bad history of necromancy. Um, so a lot of people are, su are superstitious and they're, they're very um, worried what these wizards might be up to. So your band, whether uh, you guys have previously kind of known each other or not, is up to you. Um, have been hired to go and kind of investigate, um, seek out these wizards. Now, uh, with that, uh, let's see. We don't really know too much of really backstories with this, but um, why don't we start with some of your characters' little backstories here? Uh, just a little brief introduction of your, your character, like, what are they, what do they look like, um, you know, where they come from, why they adventure. Just, like, short and sweet. Uh, let's start with, um, let's do alphabetical order. Bandok. Uh, Bandok is a, is a beefy dwarf. He, uh, was, um... His family pulled some strings and got him into the uh, military as a soldier uh, because he just couldn't get the hang of smithing. Um, he's kind of the black sheep of his family now, but he does his best to, to help the people of the village and our, our town. And um, he hits things really hard. All right. Hobo Steve. Well, Hobo Steve, why silent, by the way, is a human male, scruffy, black hair. Now, some people say he's crazy, and they'd be right. Also, pants are overrated. We don't have time for no pants. And he's here because, well, some places can't afford good adventurers. All right, and uh, Shustu, is that how you pronounce it? Shustu, yes. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, by a quick clarification, when was the green fire thingy? Uh, a little over a year ago. Okay. So Shustu, till a year ago, was part of Gypsy Caravan, till the green fire washed over him, awakening his hidden bloodline. Till then, he was a normal human male. Now, the fire awakened his UNT bloodline. And the previously blue eyes are now yellow slit ones. Uh, his skin is starting to develop some sort of scaly nature to them. And he is wearing the typical gypsy, you know, a lot of shawls, a lot of loose clothes, that kind of thing. And since then, he left his caravan and he's traveling around trying to understand his newfound powers. Okay. Snake. Snake's good eating. Well then. So. Um, just to kind of... Um, Mm, just to save some time here, because again, we, we've literally had to kind of throw this together in less than 30 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let's say uh, y'all are pretty much getting ready, you know, going to transit to this locale, but if you would like to kind of talk around the small hamlet or what would your characters try to do before, um, you know, leaving this this hamlet to go to out to this small cottage on the outskirts. Hmm. 
I don't want to deny you guys RP, you know, possibilities, but I want to make sure you guys. I need some supplies. There ain't rubbish bins. Good. Why would you rubbish bins? Yes. You get supplies from rubbish bins. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. That's free. Yes, but you have some money, don't you? Are you broke? Free. Of course. I'm Hobo Steve, not Fancy Pants and Lord Steve. I am Lord of the Hobos. <laughs> You're Lord uh, the Hobos. You go scavenge and I will just go to tavern and get some stuff. Alright, well, what kind of stuff would you get from the tavern? A good bottle of wine. Well, not good. Gypsy good. So, the cheapest one. <laughs> okay. Alright, the cautious silver piece. Okay. And do we know anything about our future employment? Um, like who hired you? Yes. Um, yeah. So basically the, um, the burgomeister of the town here, um, a nice man, uh, we'll just say, uh, his name is, uh, his name is, uh, Jonathan, um, but, again, small, simple town, not really too much to it. It's a very small farming community, so mm. um, he's not, like, big prominence like you'd see from a, a larger town. Um, not real big fancy pants. He's just somebody who has natural leadership abilities, is able to really talk to people. So he kind of galvanizes the rest of the small hamlet community, and they all look to him when it comes to, like, settling disputes. Um, Cthoni, it's kind of like well, how Katsu was, you know, the, the guy that everybody kind of went to because he was very mm -hmm. level-headed. He's uh, he's like that. Um, just not as infatuated with um, other things that Katsu was. But, you know, he's just that level-headed guy that can s to settle disputes. He sees things from both perspectives. Um, very down-to-earth. Um, and he's the one, a lot of people have been causing this ruckus. They're very nervous around um, magic users because magic's not a common thing. It's not so rare that everybody's like, oh my god, magic. But the history is, magic has, has caused a lot of problems. So people are naturally nervous about it as is. And being a small hamlet, these people of magic is, you hear all these tales of, and now they actually have people that no kind of magic that live near them and it makes them even more mm. uh, on guard and now there's a lot of things that they don't like you know um, you know the, the, the strange smells the sounds the um, all these other rumors that these people are because they don't like them and it's causing a lot of uh, turmoil in the town and he wants somebody to just kind of go over there see what's going on talk to them so that they can come you know basically so you can just yeah. open up the okay, air to everybody it. So since I'm in the tavern already, I may as well ask the innkeeper or whoever is behind the bar. I'm about sorry, I'm getting current... a call. I have to be right back. <laughs> yeah. About current happening, like what was the last strange thing that happened? Well, the um, most recent that uh, most of the towns have been talking about is the, the recent bouts of uh, foul smells uh, and stenches coming from the place. Um, mostly they keep to themselves, um, those, the wizards there. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, um, from what they know and they describe to you is, um, a male human, just kind of short, neat cut hair and a, um, either a half elf or an elven woman with kind of long blonde hair, emerald green eyes, very fair skin. They're the pair that live there. They're the quote-unquote wizards that, that are there that everybody's uh, up in arms about because they're different. And do you guys have any names? Or... Uh, names for the wizards? Yes. Yes. Um, the, the human, his name is Gendru. And 
and the one with the elvish blood is Endolin. Endolin. Okay. And uh, Jonathan's never had any issues with them. Um, you know, he's had very, very limited dealings with them. Um, they've come into town, you know, maybe once or twice. But most of the time, they seem to be very self-sufficient. They just made their kind of their presence known, and they've kept to themselves since. Sorry about that. Uh, not a problem. Welcome back. Okay. So, having that, uh, I'll go and meet up with... I already forgot your names. Um, Van Dog <laughs> and Steve. I'm really bad with names. I need to apologize. I really have hard time. That's fine. Names. That's fine. <laughs> so, what could be Bandok doing during that time? I know Hobo Steve's like knee deep in trash. Yeah, Hobo Steve's going through his um, his supply depot. Yeah, it's exactly. Atlanta. It's his his own version of Pier One. He's just going through everything, trying to take parts of furniture and whatever he can. Bandok, um, while he was away with that, we'll just say he was drinking, and now he's um, focused enough to join the conversation. So, welcome back, Cthulhu. Yeah. Uh, ba ba Bandok is just kind of staying behind uh, uh, Hobo Steve and just kind of watching him go through the trash. Can't have any. <laughs> nice. This is Hobo's Hobo Steve's. Would you consider Steve a um, filthy fellow? Hmm? Or, like, is he clean or is he, you know, filthy? Is he Caleb oh, no, he... from uh, Critical <laughs> Role, essentially? <laughs> that, just... that smell the town people think is the wizards? That ain't the wizards. Well, then, <laughs> I guess Shuster needs to cast some prejudication to cleaning this up and now we are one clean hobo how does hobo feel about being magically clean from top to bottom ah I found the wizard get him boys you uh you find anything in there oh well some wine I was asking. and some knowledge and I looks around. Oh, it's, it's me. I'm all masking. What kind of knowledge you find? Well, the two wizards up the, you know, cottage thingy, Gendru and Dolin, they visit town from time to time. Seems like normal fellow, but lately, strange smells come from the cottage. Now it's us that needs to check that. But first, should we meet with the town person, or should we just go to the cottage? Um, you've you've already had Did your dealings. Oh, okay. So this is just kind of you're getting ready to go, and then go to the cottage. It's just on the outskirts of the hamlet, so it's not too far away where you have to you know gather days and days of supplies. Just like a mile or so from town. The cottage. Yes. Let's get going. Well, Steve, lead the way. If it's smell that you should follow. <laughs> well, I'm good in tracking. May not. But ladies always find me handy. Well, if fight is what we expect, I, I need a little more preparation. And the cottage, is it like outside of the town? or Yes, it is um, outside of the town, out of the little hamlet. Um, okay. So whoever's leading the expedition, uh, I would like them to make a survival check for me, yeah. please. But before uh, we do that, I would like to, once we're out of the town, like go to out of sight of any people. And tell both Steve and uh, Bandok to move away from me, because I'm going to try something. And I will cast Mage Arm on myself. OK. 
Okay. Well, um, when you do cast that, um, there's a kind of a... The magical energies almost form like the various pieces of the armor, like this ghost-like armor just come flying out of the aether um, and clasp onto your chest, your arms, and just vanish out of sight once they clasp on. You feel the protection of the the mage armor, but you don't visibly see that anymore. It's just kind of like that spectral image of the spell triggering. Whew. Okay, that worked. Down here. I can't the wizard. anything this time. I'm on you, I'm, wizard. Well, I'm no wizard. Like, do you remember the thing that happened a year ago? Uh, no key flame, stuff I got like th that. I got thrown out of town for being drunk again. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Well, bad stuff happened, and I find that I can do stuff, and not quite understand how can I do that. And it doesn't always work. Sometimes strange things happen. So that's why when I cast, I try to be as far away from people as I can. Don't want to blow anything up again. Uh, no blowing stuff up. That's a shame. All right, let's get going. Yes. Um, so, I, I assume Bandock's actually going to lead the way. You don't know. Uh, I'll assist. I have proficiency, but I also have an eight wisdom, so... Mm. So that'll be fun. So what's your survival bonus like? <laughs> Plus one. Well, that's the same like me. So... Bandock, do you got anything better? Uh, yeah, I have plus two. I'll assist then. You go then. All right, make your uh, survival check with advantage since you're being assisted. Ooh. Uh, Fifteen. Wait, why is that saying Zoro? Wait, what? I see Bandock what online. You, what are you talking about? I see Bandock. I just pushed up here. Hang on. All right. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, the following uh, the path outside of town, even though it's about a mile, there are, you know, it is a wilderness out here. And it is, you know... You are capable of being lost with this, um, especially since there's not a lot of well-traveled paths going to this place, this cottage. Um, but using your your training, your um, your history being in the wilderness, you're able to find the little small footpaths that are covered with the various fallen leaves and uh, undergrowth. And eventually, you arrive at this very small cottage um it's it's nestled in a grove of uh maple trees and by a cursory glance it's a very uh unassuming structure very simple nothing really outlandish on the outside it's not like you know made of skulls or there's magical emotes flowing around there's nothing like that. it just looks like a simple cottage there is a chimney which does have uh, so a little tail of smoke, kind of a little light grayish smoke coming out, going into the sky. Bet you that's where they cook the children. Wizards like doing that. Indeed. Who did it? I well, well, love fact. That's what I think if he was eating. A common practice in my lands. I think if he was eating children, we would have known about it by now. Did you see the town where they get the children and they would starve anytime soon? Did we see any children in the town? Mm, I mean, yeah, they had little kids and stuff. Um, that wasn't an issue. Plus, if children were missing, people would tell us. Yeah, no, nobody's been missing. There hasn't been any... Um, you know, attacks on the, the town folk themselves. You know, there's nothing with that. That's just all a lot of superstition, a lot of things that these people... Um, think about, like, like, you know, old people and somebody different comes into town. They're just like this, you know, 
small town almost racism you know it's like they're different they're they're magic users we don't like magic users um you know get them out of here and the the mayor there jonathan he's just no um you know they haven't done anything really to warrant this but the people are making enough um ruckus there's enough turmoil going on that he needs to do something about it so he's just having you kind of go out talk to these people find out kind of you know what's going on why they're here and then just just to kind of make peace here with the townsfolk mm-hmm. and these people because nobody's really done anything wrong yet but if things keep going the way they are somebody's going to do something incredibly stupid so now that we are closing on the cottage do we notice the smell that they were mentioning um let's see i mean there's there's a smell and it does smell like kind of like a little burnt smell but nothing unusual it's almost like somebody burnt something cooking um but nothing like you know burning flesh or you know anything like that and it's not that pungent it's just enough in the air like you can smell like somebody burnt something recently sounds like someone has the runes <laughs> wow did you know that right like what guess. Smell what? Smells like daisies. Daisies. Well, should I call a knock then? Knock away. Knock, I will. So I will knock. Alright, I am going to get you guys on the map here. I just got to uh, enable something here. Hopefully this will work. Uh, let's see. Should be this one here. Nope. Hang on. God damn it. Is it not working? There we go. Yeah, good. All right. We can actually see some stuff. Uh, let me zoom in just so... All right, it's not a giant map. You should be able to see all three of your tokens there. I'm not sure which one's which, but um, there's your tokens, and the door's in the open spot in between your tokens. So you are knocking first. Um, So going up, you just... Can I do that with my hand? Yeah, I mean, you could... You can knock with Mage Hand. You can interact with physical objects. Then I would like... Don't go like all the way back, but just take a few steps and knock. Alright. So you cast uh, Mage Hand, you use that to knock on the door, mm-hmm. same thing, you know. Doop, doop, doop. Um, is anybody by the door? I'll be next to next to him. I mean, I'm I'm at the door with him when he's knocking. Okay, what about you, Hobo Steve? Now he's he's a few steps back from the door. He's not actually right by the door. He's using a spell to knock on the door. I'll be back with him. Okay, I'll stand in front of the door then. All right, if nobody's standing in front of the door. Bodak, make a perception check for me, please. Three. <laughs> um, you don't really hear anything. Nobody's come to answer the door, um, but you don't hear anything from beyond the door either. It's just you hear the, like the birds outside just kind of chirping and um, the various wildlife, you know, like little squirrels and things moving on the tree branches outside. Other than that, it's like a nice day. The sun's out, partially cloudy, um, very serene picture, but nobody's coming to the door. Um, uh, I'll knock this time. Or as, or as the guard, if you like having your door on its hinges, you better come, you better come to it. All right. As you knock again and introduce with that phrase, you wait a few moments. 
don't hear any footsteps. Nobody's come by the door. Kick in the door. Well, okay, make a strength wait. check. <laughs> How about you try opening them? But that's not fun. <laughs> Dwarf is kicking in the door. <laughs> 17. Door flies open. Um, because it was open all the time. <laughs> so, um, in the room beyond here. Uh, so, as the door flies open, you clearly broke the lock mechanism on that door. You have no idea if it was actually locked or not, but it doesn't matter anymore. The door flies open. Beyond you is this nice, quaint, cozy room. There's um, some, like, stuffed chairs uh, facing a fireplace. Um, there's, uh, like, a little small reading table there. Um, there's, um, like, a little open book on the table. And you can see a little an archway beyond there that looks to lead into um, another room. But you can't really see into that room. They just see kind of the, the archway from there. Yep. Looks like they're gone. We win. <laughs> I'll just walk right in. Okay. Bandok. All right. Yeah. So, as you start walking in and you, you go by the, the chairs and the tables and the book, um, the little book that's on the table... Um, it, uh, slams shut. The curtains on the windows shut. And the book itself flies up, uh, towards you. Um, it, it swings past your head, like flies past your head and lands across the other side of the room. That ghost missed. <laughs> Van Dirk, what's going on? Ghost threw a book at my head. Uh, where did Damn. the book land? The book landed, uh... uh boy, why won't it let me ping over here? Just hold the button. I, I am, and it's not doing jack uh let me try this. long like wrong layer maybe? yeah uh oh, i think it's wrong okay. layer. yeah the, 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 yeah the book's over here so the book was here and then it flew over uh flying at bandock's head and landed across the room here is it doing anything it's just lying on the floor right now I'll walk over and like poke it with my dagger to see if it's doing anything. Okay, as you go to poke at it with your dagger, um, uh, by the little rack over there, uh, there's a little poker for going for the fireplace, and that swings mm -hmm. out at your arm. And it completely misses your arm with a natural one. <laughs> um... Guys, I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. The door to the the uh, cottage here slams shut. I attempt to open them. Okay. Damn wizards. As you go by the door, the there's little curtains on the back side of the, the door there to kind of block the little window. The cords mm -hmm. themselves reach out to you to try to wrap around your throat and strangle you. Um, they may, uh, they hit an AC of 14. What is your armor class? 15 at so, the moment, thanks to Mage Armor. <laughs> so, the cords start like flying out towards you, and they start like wrapping around your, your head and start around your throat. You manage to put your hand in between the cords in your throat and kind of push way far enough where you can kind of dip your head down and get away from it. Pull out my greatsword <laughs> and I swing at the cords. <laughs> okay, Dang. make an attack roll. Uh... <laughs> 24. In the meantime, would I have 
any idea what could have caused something like that? Um, you're make a I'm proficient in Arcana if that helps. Um, yeah, you can make an Arcana check. So while you're thinking about that and making an Arcana check, Bandak, as you swing, you slice the cords off the curtains off the door. Uh, the curtains themselves now start to kind of reach out, uh, like they have a life of their own, and they're trying to uh, trying to reach out and grab you. So let's um, let's add some initiative here. Add some custom labels here. Hobo Steve. Choose to. Let's say curtains. Puck. Poker. All right, and let's roll some uh, some d20s here. All right. Sixteen for me. Nine for me. 23. Stay free. Oh, God. It's the hobo sense. It's tingling. And... Where's your sisters? What was your 16? Just two. Yeah, what was your initiative? 16. 16, yeah. Okay. Let's put that in descending order. All right. So with that... Did they just poke every enemy in the room by random? <laughs> More or less. <laughs> I'm like, let, let's just see what happens here. And then, yep. <laughs> Did I have rolled damage on the curtains? Uh, you actually killed a separate entity, the the cords, because they were another entity. Okay. Because okay, I didn't know if uh, Lauren was coming in here, but they're they were weak enough where it it, it was okay. So, but yeah, yeah, that was uh, that's good stuff. All right, Hobo Steve, these objects moving around, trying to attack you and these strange travelers you're with. What would you like to do? Is there a chair or anything nearby? There are uh, four chairs in the room. Two of them closest to your where you're at. In fact, the one right next to you is a kind of a padded chair. It's a stuffed chair. The others are wood. Because there's a slight problem. Hobo Steve doesn't actually happen. So, um... He's going to grab the chair... <laughs> Okay. Then move up and, uh... What's the most threatening... What's the closest thing moving that he doesn't like near him? Well, the things that you've seen... Well, right right where you're at, um... There's a... Uh... Poker that, uh, swung at, uh, Shustu, and there's a book on the floor. In those two places, basically. Well... Well, heat that chair and smash it over that poker. Okay, go ahead. Improvised weapons, go. <laughs> smash it, he does. <laughs> but uh, it's a metal poker. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you, you, you swing at it. Um... Like, the chair hits it, but it's a flat object, like a, a metal poker. The chair doesn't seem to really have much of an effect on the poker. This may be my most dangerous enemy yet. Alright, you have any bonus actions uh, or other movement you want to do? Nah, I'll stay here. Alright, in fact, let me, uh, since you two are Bandock and Hover up here... Let me... I'm just going to reveal some more of the place here. Okay. Alright. Um, with that, the book 
begins to fly up at you, Steve. As you're distracted, hitting at that poker, the book begins to flap and fly towards you, streaming like a paper-backed missile. Um, it flies out towards you, um, hitting a 12 armor class. Steve shrugs it off. You use the chair to glance the blow as the book goes careening off in this direction here. No knowledge can hurt me. I'm too dense for that. <laughs> Just do it. See you there. <laughs> you, you're seeing the craziest things. Pokers, books, curtains, draw cords, all trying to kill people. What do you do? Well, I do wonder if what I'm able to do is either stupid or not, but I will attempt to poison spray the curtains. Okay. Uh, it's a con save of 13. Okay. And uh, how much poison damage would that do? Uh, 1d12. Okay, good. Uh, let me roll. Hold three points. Okay. So, you spray the curtains down um, with that, that poisonous spray. Um, you're not sure what effect it's having on curtains. You, you know, they're still flapping and moving about, almost taking like a hand-like shape to try to grab you. Um, but they don't seem to be... Um, doing any erratic movements from it. Still seems to be just kind of flipping and it's like you just covered the cloth in this poison. Oh well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I will stand where I stand. <laughs> and that's end of my turn. Okay. Hobo Steve, the poker, begins to fly up very rapidly towards your crotch. <laughs> Steve, no! And, uh... Well, they must have been smaller than I thought because it missed with a seven. <laughs> it just... Right between Hobo Steve's legs, across the room, over here to Bandock. See, that's why I don't wear pants. That's right. Pants would have gotten burnt. Well, they weren't in the fire. They were just, like, on a little rack. Like, a little tool rack. Like, you would have, like, um... A poker, maybe a little sweep and a little pan for the ashes, like a little brass pan. They, they were kind of just hanging on this little tool rack. I still stick by my pantsless theory. <laughs> so, what does Steve wear? Like, boots, shirt, and a smile. <laughs> and that shirt is unbuttoned. Does he have at least boxers or something? Loincloth? You're not really sure from just how much hair he has. <laughs> he may actually be a tabaxi. You're not sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's see if I can make this smaller. Either way, I can't go in certain towns ben anymore. Bandok, it is your turn. All right, uh, the book, is it this one? this one? Yes, that is the book. I'm going to take a swing at it. All right. Twenty-one. Twenty-one will hit. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Ten damage. Okay. So, you swing. As the book comes flying towards you, the blade pierces right down the spine uh, through one of the, the back cover of the book. As it does so, you see the pages start to fall off from the binding, hitting the floor. The rest of the book, as it still kind of flaps a little bit, flies on both sides of you as it hits the ground motionless, just kind of skidding beside you. On the ground where books deserve to be. <laughs> I am right. All right. 
So, now the curtains. So I'll put that here. All right, the curtains are going to reach out. And completely, but wow, they, they've only had one roll that was above a nine. So, this was not one of those rolls. Um, yeah, a five is going to miss you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, are they like floating, or how does that look? The, the curtains, right um, yeah. The curtains aren't really floating, they're just kind of whipping out from by the door. So, you're close enough where they can try to. You know, wrap around you and try to strangle you or grapple you, but they, they're they're still wet from your poison spray, and they're they were unable to grapple you successfully. You're able to kind of slip away from them before they can mm. actually tighten their grasp on you. Oh, okay. So I am trying to put some nameplates on here, so you just kind of see what these are. Ah, oh, the beauties. Black, uh, well, the adventures are going fine. This is just a one-shot today because uh, we had a few last-minute cancellations. So enjoy the game that you're watching. This was put together in 30 minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, right now they're fighting um, Houseware. And they're level one. So that will end the curtain's turn. Hobo Steve. Right, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to take these two broken legs from the chair, and I'm going to go to town on the poker. Hey, come on, man. This is PG stream, man. Come on, man. It tried to burn me. It wasn't heated. <laughs> it was just on a tool rack. <laughs> go ahead. Make your attack rolls. With, I don't know. This is perception. It definitely was heated. You know, I'm saying negative enough. one. Perception negative one. Well, that's going to hit. Roll your damage. Uh, leg would be a club, so 1d6. Well, it's more of an improvised weapon. Yep. And he is proficient with them. Okay. So, um, that's why I had to be a varying human so I could get it. Okay, yeah. So D six plus uh, strength. <laughs> All right. Still challenging him. Uh, you've dented it severely. Um, the the poker is now bent. It's no longer as straight as it was, but it's still threatening. I will make an offhand attack. What are you attacking with? The other leg. Uh, oh, uh, did the chair did the chair not shatter when I hit it? Um it's not that it didn't shatter. Um let me just see something, because I'm pretty sure that's not a light weapon. Let me check real quick. Would you consider it like a club, or...? Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, well, that, that is. So, yeah, go ahead and make your offhand. Uh, it's an eight. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a seven. Yeah, it's an eight. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Only 1d4. Let me reroll that damage. Uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll just we're doing a one shot. It's not that dead. It's not going to affect the whole thing. It's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll six. Do it for next time. Well, um, all right. Well, an eight is not going to be enough to really kind of hit it. It's after the first blow, kind of bent it. It started kind of skittering and spinning around. You go to swing at it with your offhand, and it manages to spin around the club a little bit, almost like a horseshoe would, and then skitter off of it so it really glanced that blow truly my most dangerous foe guys we should run <laughs> it's your nemesis okay book is no more shustu 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 will disengage okay 
and tactically go around the table. <laughs> okay. And that's it. All right. Kurt, you're still flailing, but they they don't get a chance to get you because you're disengaging. Be very cautious. The poker, however, means business, Hobo Steve. It flies at you, hitting an 18 armor class. That's definitely going to hit. And brace yourself. It does a whopping two damage as it beams you on the back of it. It doesn't hit you with the sharp points. It managed to kind of hit you with part of the bent area where the club hit. Whang! And, uh... You what, mate? <laughs> yeah. He just molly whops you. Just... Bah! And it's still kind of spinning. Moving in place. Um, but it's still there. As Bandok looks on this really goofy scene after slaying a book. I raise my, my greatsword over my head and bring it down like a giant club. <laughs> All right. We'll make your attack roll. Dwarf going. Ah! All right, roll your damage. <laughs> Minimum damage, five. Well, Hobo Steve, you're not sure if the dwarf was trying to hit you or the poker, but the blade went through the poker and cleaved the poker in twain. Two little bits of broken poker scatter uh, the cabin floor. That was my kill. Give it back. Right there. All right. You win this round. Captain has answers for everything. All right. The curtains have stopped moving. Hello? Hello, Steve. Okay. The curtains have stopped moving. The curtains have stopped moving. Out of principle, I'm gonna have to break him anyway. <laughs> okay. So, as you go there, Hobo Steve, the curtains lash out towards you as if they were waiting for somebody to come close. They hit an 11 armor class, but that is not enough. What do you do to them, Hobo Steve? He bats them away with his clubs and then proceeds to uh, return fire. Wait, Kobo Steve has curtains now? He's gonna have curtains. It's curtains for you, buddy. Alright, roll your damage. So, as you hit the curtains with uh, your makeshift club, they don't seem to really be having an effect on them. But they hit. They hit. You, you got it good. Like, it was flapping around. You pegged that thing as hard as you could with that club. And the club didn't seem to really affect the curtains. As a bonus action, as part of Tavern Brawler, I'm now going to attempt to grapple the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Holy shit. Oppose <laughs> athletics or acrobatics. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, 18. Yeah, that beats a five. <laughs> so you, gra you successfully grapple the curtains. <laughs> Too fancy for me, I'll show you. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Well, you have the curtains. That's all. Oh, wait. I am now going to attempt to move. How much movement do I have left? I'm going to attempt to move the curtains five feet back. So you see Hobo Steve wrestling with the curtains. Now, they're not ripped off the door yet. It looks like they could stretch, um, you know, into that space normally. So... You, like, got them where you see the tension on the, the, the rings of the door. 
and you're just wrestling these door curtains, these animated door curtains. <laughs> Get, I got him, guys! You're amazing. coming home with me. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> All right. Um, on that note, Shustu. Hold them like that, Steve. I got it. And I cast Firebolt on them. <laughs> <laughs> While what he's wrapped up in them. Fireball? How the fuck do you have fireball? Bolt. Bolt. <laughs> hey, oh, Katie. okay. I, I sh <laughs> Well, if I had fireball, that would be a very interesting development, wouldn't it? Everybody's be? dead. <laughs> wow. Everyone fireball, everyone dies. Yeah. Alright, well, uh, make your attack roll on him. Stop moving so much, Steve! I don't want to be on fire. Also, due to the new backstory that we were introduced, the firebolt is green. <laughs> green flame. All right. Yeah. Well, they hit. Uh, roll your damage. Oh, th that hits. Okay. Uh, not that hard to hit. <laughs> All right. As, as a part of the casting a flammable object hit by the spell ignites if it isn't being worn or carried so i don't know what's your role on that well um so it is ignited um it is on fire the problem though is poor hobo steve is currently grappling it um so hobo steve you're gonna take one point of fire damage as you're wrapped up in this flaming curtain <laughs> uh, stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Spread the flame. But the curtains themselves um, slowly begin to stop animating as Steve kind of wrestles them to the ground, beating them. And then they just kind of burn and smolder on the cabin floor. <sighs> now, how are we supposed to sell them? Yeah, how are you supposed uh, to use those for your cabin now? That's like half a shot right there we could have had. Exactly. Is, is there... How good. Is there a, uh, a fire in the fireplace? There is. Bar uh, <laughs> Bandai looks the other two. Get out of the house. Um... Uh, how about we check the rest of the house? Maybe the Good. Kendra oh, and, and Dolina are up there. Uh, house. We weren't told to kill people. Yes. Where to check stuff? Not burn their houses. Now, if for some reason they don't want to come with us after we talk to them, then we burn it down. Well, I mean... Oh no! Stuff I'll, in the I'll... house is attacking us. Is that's only three items to far attack us, and to far everything looks fine. Look, there is axe on the table. It didn't attack us. Why would someone have axe on the table? Well, if they run out of the house, that's on fire. We'll find out. Or would you pay for the house if they ran out and everything was misunderstanding? Right. Misunderstanding. And he uses these uh, air quotes. <laughs> what is that weird finger movement that you are doing? The, the emphasis movements. My emphasis fingers. Uh, see, okay. He, 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 he... I don't have emphysema. I don't know what you're doing that for. I'm not even sure that Steve can read. I can read. I mean, I might be able to read. I haven't tried. I've got a few <laughs> books that are underneath my dining room table leg, though. Well... Speaking of dining room tables, the other room that you see um, 
after your confrontation with those objects. There is kind of a dining area slash kitchen in the next uh, chamber that you see through the archway. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it a fine dining room, um, but a table is there set for two. Uh, though, if they took some of the chairs, it could fit four people. Um, they do have uh, a little large uh, kind of picture window on the back side, which shows a wonderful view of all those maple trees that you saw. Um, there is a... The kitchen does look kind of, just at a cursor glance, looks fairly well appointed, but it also looks like a disaster area a bit. Um, there are various like pots and pans that are visibly strewn about, broken uh, crockery, uh, is on the floor. Various cooking ingredients of all kinds are splattered about the floor and the walls. Um, it's uh, it's a very chaotic mess inside. And the um, the smell that you started coming here, um, it, it does smell like there was something that kind of burnt, like something was cooking. But um, you do feel the the air get a little warmer. From the rest of the cottage. They're as good as cooks as me. Let's steal their food. Well, they're obviously just having food fights or something in here. You go and check. Now just stand here in the doorway. Seems safe enough. Now just shoot stuff that moves. Steve's going to start investigating the wreckage. All right, make an investigation check. With advantage. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm not Did skilled I... in it. Nope, I'm not skilled in it either. I thought I put a point in it. Seven. <laughs> Six. <laughs> I guess science that doing that, I will attempt to do so as well. With much higher modifier than the two of them. Alright. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Seven, six, five. That That Four. is what I'm talking about. Dungeons and Dragons. Right there, fellas. But this ain't a Dungeons and Dragons dragon either. Problem how solved. You, how do you know? Four. Four. There could Four. be dragons. Clearly, burn it down. Dragons we, are weak to fire. We, we've investigated, and we're good investigators, else they wouldn't have sent us. So, damn right. There's stairs. Yes, there are. Yeah. There are stairs. There are stairs that I know. I've, again, I had to kind of get this map off real quick. Um, I did incorporate the stairs in this. The stairs, though, are not leading up. They're leading down. And uh, down the steps, there's a door that you can see. Um, at this door, there's a chair that's propped up in front of it, holding it closed. Hmm. All right, I got a plan. Well, do you do you but, think chairs can walk? Well, how about well, you can hear the door? But I got a better plan. You go down there, you smash open that door. I'll be back here with the table. If something bursts out to hurt you, I'll throw the table. All right, a good plan. Really uh, good plan. We're we're scholars, the three of us. Yes, but first but, let's listen. If that no, is, if that no, 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 that is not part of the plan. Bandok goes down the stairs and begins beating the door in with the great sword. Okay. Steve so just going to lean next to Shuster and say, right, when it comes out and I throw the table, it started on fire. We'll remember him bravely. <laughs> so speaking of that, um, as you're, you know, kind of hanging back there, uh, Steve, the yep. 
the kitchen stove that they have, like the little oven, begins to get incredibly hot. Like, so hot it starts to actually glow a little bit, and then the front latch of the stove itself kind of pops open. And inside you see, like, this roaring fire. This is where you smell a lot of that burning smell come from. And that's when you see this little, like, 18-inch fiery person just run out of the stove, running towards you. Little tiny fiery footprints on the floor, charging at you. It's almost like a flaming baby Groot. I, I will do a voice for Shusto, but I'm not very good at girly screams. <laughs> oh, I guess so I just actually... imagine you hear a girly scheme behind you, okay? Well, there's only one thing to do with fire the charge at you. Yeah, stomp it out. <laughs> All right. Hey, Bandock. The stove thingy's trying to hack us. The pirate light, I think. I'm, I'm busy talking to the door. Here, we can use this to start the door on fire. All right, so I want all three of you uh, roll initiative. We're going to see uh, when Ben X starts chopping that door down um, and what Steve and Shustu are doing as this little fiery spirit is coming at you. 11. 18. Steve's 11. very good at reacting. What's your dex? I think you both have plus two. Yeah, plus two. So okay, like Steve but on 1d20 and they kind of goes fast. So, <laughs> alright, well, Hobo Steve. This is, uh, go first. This is your jam. He, he is going to attempt to stomp the fire out. Okay, so this little 18 inch fiery person is charging at you. Yeah! <laughs> slam, slam, slam. <laughs> alright. Make uh make your attack roll. <laughs> okay, so as you go to the kind of stomp on it, it it kind of leaps and rolls out the way, creating these little tiny little fire wisps as it does on the floor. Just little, little tiny singe marks, um, but it's it's still like now that you're trying to stomp on it, it's even closer to you than before. Can you make an offhand attack unarmed? Um, if you are training it, maybe. Um, I know like the monks can as part of their class, but as part of the brawler, I don't think he can. Yeah, yeah I'll just sweep it then with the uh, the club. <laughs> does a nine hit? Nine does not hit it. Steve's just there flailing around trying to kick things. <laughs> Ends up hitting the table, stubbing his toes, screaming loudly. <laughs> Throw your fire at it! Throw your fire at it! <laughs> Alright, so, Steve, the uh, spirit itself, wow, um, goes to try to jump and grab onto your foot the ankles um as it does so you're, you're still now you're in less stomping more of kind of jumping out of its way um it does not hit you with a five but um it is still trying to get to you all right now band back, back you little bugger you're swinging at the door correct right okay go ahead and make an attack roll all right, I'm going to speak really, really soothingly to the door. <laughs> mosh, mosh. Soothing. Does it hit? Uh, 13 will hit. Roll damage. 10 damage. 
All right, you have a pretty big gash into it. it looks like another good hit like that, and the door will be um, cleaved uh, off the hinges. Okay, so the door is is on the ground now. No, it uh, it's still there. You've damaged it pretty good. Another hit like that, and the door will not be there anymore. I stick my face through the hole. Are you in there? So, what you can see kind of with your dark vision being a dwarf and all. Um, this basement room looks like it was probably used as a much larger pantry or a larder. Uh, though every shelf and container in here looks like they've been all smashed to bits. Um, you see kind of behind some of the, the shelving, um, some of the wreckage, there's this something uh, behind some of these sacks that's starting to move. What, what I am? No, th this is where Bandok is. He's peeking from uh, the door okay. that he just made a hole can, in. Can I make a perception check to get a better look at it? Uh, go ahead and make a, a perception check. Um, right now it's kind of obscure behind some of the natural things that are in the larder. Oh. No, the, there's so much um, smears and things just from uh, the containers in here just being smashed. Everything's just a mess. And with dark vision, everything's just like this splotchy grays and various shades of gray. All right, and my turn. Shustu. Okay, uh, sounds I'm from 10 feet of the... Do great with the screams, Katie. Yeah. So I'm within 10 feet of fiery spirits. I will basically cut my hands and breathe out a, basically a green smoky snake, which will just try to invade the lungs of the creature and cast the poison spray, which is DC 13 common safe. All right. And roll your damage. Nine. Okay, as you spray it with the poison spray, some of the, the poison mist starts to evaporate on it, but some of it does hit this creature. Um, it does not seem to slow it down or its pursuit in Hobo Steve's delicious-looking ankles. Is everything giving into poison these days? <laughs> oh, what? I mean, you could spray it, Hobo Steve with it. I'm sure he's not. And my turn. Steve. Hobo Steve. He's mad. As boss actually he's gonna rage. Hobo rage. <laughs> hobo rage. <laughs> hobo rage. What exactly is a hobo rage? Like when you try to take a, like a boost from the hobo. And like he starts to take out his sheave and he just comes up to you. He really needs a sheave, doesn't he? He needs a sheave. That, I could have another right. one. Grab me one from the kitchen counter. I'm taking out this little bugger. Come at me, bro. And stomp. <laughs> and stomp. Nah. <laughs> you don't have reckless attack yet, right? No, I think that's like level 2 or 3. Yeah, that's level 2. Otherwise, he'd use it every single turn. So we need to make an extra border on maps in the future. Okay. Alright. So... Yeah, that uh, that's that's a good hit. Uh, roll your uh, double damage. Twelve. <laughs> One and a four. No. So yeah, you uh, start stepping on it as you step on it. It does flatten like it doesn't have a physical body, and when you um, when the after you recoil from the blow, you see the flames kind of start to reform and const uh, constitute this little small being's 
uh, fiery form uh, just kind of reshapes itself. Well, I, I just picture him just sitting there jumping up and down over and, <laughs> and over again, <laughs> trying to hit both boots. I still don't get how it's a seven now, even with rage. It should be plus five, though. At least at first level, if you... Three. Yeah, never mind. Minus two damage off that. I'm bad at math. It's been a long month. <laughs> well, I just... I'm playing a, a, a barbarian, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I went like no, my, my thought process was yeah it's strength plus proficiency plus two fair enough I'm, yeah yep. my brain fried since it's not programmed in so that's tended it's alright it's alright so yeah Hobo Steve is uh, jump stomping this thing as he, every time he lands and jumps off again it reforms and lands and reforms uh, eventually it reforms just out of his feet uh, his landing radius. So, but you see this little very angry, fiery spirit running around. Um, right, right now he's super hobo, Steve. And the he's a uh, plumber, fiery spirit, is going to throw one of its arms up as a bolt of flame comes launching out and hits an AC of 18. Yep, that's gonna hit, and that's gonna do four points of fire damage. Poor Steve looks pretty banged up, but he's still jumping. All right. And uh, it will actually move. Yep, select it. Uh, okay, there we go. And it's going to move this way here. And end its turn. Bandok. Um, so, what are you doing? Well, uh, I hear a yell of pain from all the from from the fighting behind me, right? From up the stairs and back into the kitchen dining. Yes. With, with a very put upon sigh, Bandak will uh, Bandak will walk back up the stairs and um, take a look at the little fire monster. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, here I come. <laughs> All right. Twenty-two. Oh my goodness! All right. 22. So, uh, let's see. That Well, that definitely hits. Uh, roll your damage. 10. 10 damage. Well, uh, with that, the spirit just kind of... It's almost like you can see it make this little scream, but no sound comes out. As the flames just kind of scatter on the floor... Starting to catch little bits of the kitchen on fire, just little, little tiny bits of the floor here, not engulfing the kitchen in flames, just, just like little bits of fire, like, um, almost like a very very small grease fire just kind of started in this little two foot area. All right, took care of that, and um, I just realized I'm missing three HP. I forgot to add my con in. But uh, Bandok. Yeah. That is, um, right when you do that, you hear something break through the door, and something very heavy is walking up those steps. <sighs> it almost has like a little, after each heavy footstep, like you hear a slight sloshing sound. Mom, is that you? Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> no, no, I can't drink right now, boom. I'm 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 working. I'm gonna stab it. <sighs> Weird. And I'm just getting the token on here. there all right so bandock 
Um, what you see coming up the steps here is this six foot tall creature that seems to be made out of and you kind of almost have to do a double take it, it almost looks like a giant walking pastry that's been smeared with reddish some kind of reddish substance doesn't look like blood but um some of its exterior almost looks like at least by the smell and the look like a powdered baked crust almost like a pizza crust I have it, to ask a very silly question. It's Pizza the Hut. <laughs> Is the oven still lit? Um, that oven, uh, no. That creature was apparently that the the pilot, the living pilot of that oven. I mean, well, you could throw something in there and light it, but it was a supernatural fire source that you just extinguished. Well, the uh, there's still a fire in the first room, right? Yes. Let's get cooking. All right. Well then, um, that's all it's going to move right here. Shustu. Mm. Time to get cooking, and I will do the Bible. If I can hit them, that is. Well, you can't I see that creature. You. That's oh, I can't. Happen. No, because there, there's a stairwell going like, down. So you'd have to I go past here? Bandock to kind of see it. Here? Uh, more of... Let me get on the right layer here. More of you'd have to be here to see it because it's coming up the stairs. Bandock can see it because he's right by the stairs. Okay, so, so move there. Shoot. Which would be 1d20 plus 5. Hit it, possibly. 14. Do I hit it? Uh, you do. Uh, you do hit it. Roll uh, your damage. Okay. Uh, what's that about? Airport is 1d10, fire damage. Nine. All right. So as you hit it with that firebolt, um, you see some of the crust start to, to blacken on it. Um, as it does, bubbling out of the, the crust itself seems to be that whatever reddish stuff is, and it sprays out Bandok. Need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Right, okay. Twenty. Twenty. Okay, so uh, you are gonna take uh, one point of uh, fire damage. As whatever the stuff that sprayed out is boiling hot. And a little bit sprayed on you. All right. Okay. All right, Shustu, does that end your turn? Um, I will move back if I can. Uh, yeah, you can. I was only th three, okay. so. All right, Hobo Steve. You saw Shustu fire at something uh, that's clearly coming up that stairwell. Um, and then you saw Bandock get sprayed with something, and he kind of winched a little bit in uh, pain. Well, Hobo Rage is still going on, so... Of course it is. Hobo Rage is always going on. It's the, it's the rage. I'm going to charge in and uh, start smacking it. Backhand style. All right. See that hulking crust creature coming up the stairs doesn't make a sound other than it's heavy sloshing foot uh, footfalls does an 8 hit 8 does not hit well I'm going to attempt to shiv it with my blunt object alright <laughs> so first swing it kind of bats out the way you 
could try you could attempt to eat it. Oh, that Ooh, old trusty nice. table leg. 22 is gonna hit. Gonna call you Taby. Four points of damage. Oh, wait, six. Because rage stacks on off hands, too. All right. So, as you hit it, uh, more of this reddish fluid flies out of it. Bandock again, and Hobo Steve. I need you to make dexterity saving throws, please. Ten. Ten, okay. And Hobo 20. Steve. Hobo Steve, you take one point of fire damage. Bandok, you take two points of fire damage as more of this boiling reddish substance flies on your skins. Just, just kind of sizzles on there. You see the, the welts forming. Skin is blistering. My beautiful skin. Why does it blood, Why does its blood hurt so much? Would they know? I mean, they could try. I mean, they would roll Arcana. I could sure. roll Arcana. I said I should have more than that. I have oh, a 14. Two. Wasn't expecting two. that one. Natural 20, 19. <laughs> wait, um, something's weird. <clears throat> well, oh, wait. We have to be to that. Well, Bandok, the best that you can, having seen variants of this through Dwarven culture stories, um, as far as you can guess, this is some sort of animated construct. And that's about as best as you can get from this. And you're not, this is not your forte. But this has all the, the similarities, at least, that you can connect the dots with from your Dwarven history of it being some sort of construct. It's it's an alambated conduct. We, we must conduct ourselves. What, what, like what? Should we like do a tea party? Oh, yeah. conduct. Yeah. I'll perform music. All right. I'm known in many party. lands as Oh gosh, please make him stop singing. <laughs> Bandock, it is your turn, sir. Well, oh, Bandock is uh is looking at the sizzling spots on his skin. You you know hurt Bandock. And he goes into a rage. <laughs> Bandok is going to drop his great sword and try and tackle the construct. Oh, I thought he was going to pick up Hobo Steve and use him as an improvised weapon. So, um, that's, uh, athletics. And since I'm, uh, raging. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I, I get, uh, advantage. Go ahead and roll it. <laughs> Twenty-two. That that will definitely succeed. So yeah, you, you're grappling this thing. Um, so, all right. Um, and as you touch it, you just feel all this heat generating from it. That, um, well, if you weren't in a berserker rage right now, normal people would think this is a very bad idea. But you're still hugging it. No, no, it's a very good idea. I grew up with brothers. I know what I'm doing. I'm trying it to the fire. All right. You do anything else uh, with the grapple with it? Um, how does it work for pinning it? Do I have to do that on my next turn? knocking it prone yeah it takes yeah it takes, a, it takes a full action to do that that is correct then um i'm, I'm done for now uh all right 
So since you're physical contact with that, um, you are going to take um, another two points of fire damage. The burning means it's working. Feel the burn. So. All right, it's grappled. It cannot move, but it can still attack and attack it shall. Well, they have Hobo Steve, or they have this crazy dwarf that's uh, hugging it right now. I think it's going to uh, go after the dwarf that's hugging it right now, as it uh, raises its fist like a, like a, just entwines its fingers, making a club, and it just tries to come down. Um, it hits a AC of 18. That hits. Okay, and... Wow. All right, minimum damage on that. So uh, you are going to take uh, two points of bludgeoning damage and two points of fire damage. The bludgeoning goes down to one. All right. And uh, that is all it's going to do right now. Just went... Bleh! Shusto. Shush. Hmm. Fireball again. I don't want to kill everyone. You don't mind it. Wait. Yeah, I just need to move. There. Here. Yeah. Yeah, they're finding it on the top of the steps. Bandox got it grappled. Oh, the point. All right. So he hit it again, and as he hits it, more of that spray comes out. So, Bandox, Hobo Steve, Dexterity saving throws. Net 20. Okay. Take one point of fire damage. 17. One point of fire damage as well. Alright. And did you do anything else, uh, Shusto? Uh, no, no, no. Maybe a little bit back, but other than that, I'm pretty comfortable here. Alright. How about Steve? I'm going to drop my stuff and pick up Vandox's axe. Great sword. <laughs> Not anymore, he's turning it into an axe. <laughs> Big dwarf. Real dwarves have great axes. How am I supposed to cut open a pie with a sword? Well, it's like a big knife. Call this a knife? This is a knife. I think I was using like a very big sheath. Right, right, let's see. I put it in here. Start cutting. Life goes in, guts come out. 2d6, right? Does he get advantage because the dude's grappled? Nope. No. Grappled's pretty weak in 5th uh, edition. Yep. It does allow some good control effects, but it, it's nothing as advantageous as what you're looking for. Like the knockdowns. Well, once I pin it. Well, once you knock it prone, it'll, it'll be a different story. 11 points of damage. All right. So, um, with that, um, who, let me see here. All right, uh, it, its body ruptures open, and as it does so, all this boiling liquid comes flying out. I will need Bandok, Shustu, and Hobo Steve to make dexterity saving throws. Ooh, dexterity. Yes. 
I knew that they'd fail me at some point. That's a five. My deck safe is two, so. We're about to die, Boris. So an eight and eight and a five. Hmm. Well, it's not that bad. All right, you all take four points of fire damage. Well, it's only half my life. <laughs> Steve's barely up. Bandock's looking pretty fucked up too. I think, I think we need a smoke break, guys. But the creature, uh, his halves, fall down. One of them just kind of tumbles down the, the stairwell. Blah, 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 blah. More of that splatter, that sauce flies everywhere on the walls, the steps. Um, as it, it hits, it, it almost has a slight, kind of a sweet smelling to it. Um, and as you're sprayed with it, it's boiling your skin, you kind of taste a little bit of it and it tastes like a very fine tomato sauce though really 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 hot it burns it burns but he smells delicious all right if y'all don't mind i want to sit over here take smoke break eat this thing <laughs> maybe not in that order yeah, I'm not feeling that too, that good either. Yeah, we could take a break. Steve starts trying to put his chair back together. <laughs> All right. Ben, I fix a sit the seat in the corner. <laughs> just got plops. Some of the kitchenware goes flying as he just plops his butt down. Um, there's sauce everywhere. Um, in those squares, it it was just a a huge mess. Um, let me see if they have. Uh, I don't know if this will work. Um, little three D effects. Yeah. Uh, so can we take? We have what one hit dice at this level? Yes. And you can take a short rest and heal that one hit dice. So you get to roll it and kill that up as you're bandaging. Um, and Hobo, you're eating the creature? Of course. Tastes delicious. Okay. Ooh, I rolled high. Alright, so... Six, two, seven, Ooh, I rolled low. That's okay. I'll tell you why in a minute. I know well. So, Hobo Steve, um, since you were the only one that ate it, you were gaining additional two HP. Yay! Nice. It it it. This thing was an animated pastry creature, and it tasted delicious. Oh, gosh, mm. I, know I have to say it. It We've was entered. magically delicious. <laughs> We've entered the calzone zone. <laughs> Yes, so, banging up, healing the kitchen, this creature that was delicious, had various um, sugar, flour, cheese, tomatoes, mushrooms, olives, various other ingredients mixed with this tomato sauce, uh, bits of oregano, black powder, probably to taste. Oh, Steve, this was a very good meal. <laughs> Though, after the ruckus there, you don't really, um, you, you'd expect, you know, more things to be kind of running about in this cabin, but nothing's been moving that entire time that you've been resting, healing up, um, cleaning off your wounds. 
Oh, I will give his great sword back. I picture you just chopping off little bits of that creature with it, like slicing. Thank it. you. How did it feel? I need a regular size knife. <laughs> this is regular size. Well, what you lot think about the fact that no one came here by now? I don't think we'll the two we'll wizards there. are here. Yeah, by the way, what's down there? Did you check? A door. A door. A door, you see. And what looks to be the remains of a chair that was in front of the door. Well, there was a door down there um, that has been blasted to bits. Um, there is a chair there, but it's no longer holding a door. It's just kind of laying at the bottom of the stairwell. Hmm. Well, you're all trusted. Shall we continue exploring the house? Uh, don't have gonna... all day after all. Steve's and I run. don't fancy sleeping here. Agreed. Let me just go grab that poker real quick. The one that's been cut in half? Yep. Okay. They're like knives. Fancy knives. Look at it. I think I got the better knife. <laughs> You're just jealous. Jealous. Look at this one. It's burning hot. <laughs> it's broken. It's not. A broken. Well, to be fair, it is kind of broken. Need some duct tape. They take man can trip. Some duct. Nope. Well, see, you take a duck, and you grab some rope, and you wrap it around it. Duck. Duck. Ben goes downstairs. Duck. Do we have a I duck see. around here? I didn't see any duck. Did you? Oh, well. I'll make do. Well, anyway. Grab that poker. Grab that big cutting thing you wield. And let's go. Yep, I'll pick up the poker and another table leg, old Taby. You know, gracefully follow behind everyone. All right. <clears throat> well, as you go down the stairs to that uh, that larder, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Um, you see that the, again, what Bandok saw, which was a lot of the things that were stored in this larder, um, the shells, things were broken, smashed, a few sacks kind of remain intact, but um, some of the shelving in themselves have been broken. You see where that creature was just kind <clears> of <throat> lurking behind a shelf. And it just made its way uh, to the chamber. You do see a lot of the, the reddish smears that mar the um, <clears throat> mar the walls within here. Probably from that creature maybe pounding on the walls or moving about in this chamber. But there, there doesn't seem to be any um, other exits in this room. Uh, the room, the walls are just kind of a, almost like a flagstone. The floor is simple dirt, and there's just basic, like, wooden shelving and, you know, um, kind of like sacks that have been soaked, almost like with kerosene, just to prevent bugs and things from getting into them. Um, but the jars, the little clay jars in here, and glass, have all been shattered. I'm not cleaning up. One, two, three, not it. <laughs> not it. One, two, three, not it. Uh, I clean it up with vegetation. 
Okay. Um, that will take you a little bit as the room itself. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, it's about, um, in terms of five foot cubic space, it's, uh, yeah. 112, um, five foot cubes from floor to ceiling. Oof. Well, get clean. You said you'd do it. I did have another map ready for this in case you, for like when you guys went down here she had a bigger area to kind of mess with this thing but since he drew its attention and it just got out um but that that's the the map size for it yeah you're it so you have to clean okay just wait How long would that take then? Well, uh, for the precision, it cleans like how one much? action. Uh, press. I want to say it was. Oops, I spell it right. E, where is it? There is it. Precision. Yeah. One action. Duration it lasts an hour. Um, and okay, so it looks like I can do ten foot area. So, so it would only be uh, let's see, fifty six. So yeah, it's gonna take pretty much the better part of that hour to get everything cleaned up. But you can do it, kind of taking it columns of at a time from floor to ceiling. Right. While he's cleaning up, Steve's gonna start looting. Where are you looting at? What are you uh, going through? The basement. Just okay. So most of the things are smashed except for a few sacks, which is like they have like spilled uh, bits of like flour and grain. So make an investigation check for me. Oh, hell. Sure, if you want to dig through um, the few remaining sacks in here. Trying to steal my loot, huh? We're, see how we're, it is. we're on the same job. Right, Joe. I didn't think right. that's why I, came I claimed or... it. 14. So, with the uh, 14 going through the various sacks and stuff, um, you it becomes quite clear, like going through the first few sacks, that there is nothing of value in this larder. Everything that may have been of value was clearly destroyed by this creature's fury. However, you can't, you do know that the few sacked ingredients that remain here, um, they are of fine quality and they might fetch uh, a price, you know, if you resell them. Oh, free okay. suit, buddy. Well. It's not like anyone is home, right? <laughs> when has that ever mattered? I claimed it's mine. It's a home. Well, we split the profit. And then I'll come and beat you up. That's the difference. Here, you get one sack. One now you don't want to beat me up anymore. And uh, if you clean up, I'll give you uh, I'll give you half his sack. But it's my sack. <laughs> it's called negotiating. With my sack. We're on the same job, aren't we? I guess so. One should ever mess with another man's sack. Just saying.
Right, they're going to finish going through that. Yeah, so there's about three sacks that you can kind of pilfer from here that are fine mm -hmm. ingredients. How heavy are they, though? Uh, they're like um, probably about 10 pounds because they're, they're pretty big sacks. Um, they're like burlap that have been soaked in like kerosene. Well, I think we've saved the day. And you must be the real wizard. I knew it. You and your magics. Look, they must be like cook. Right? It's him. Did we find a body? No, Where? there's still bodies down there. It's yeah, just... But... There are three stairs up, like, is there a way up stairs, or was it, like, only one floor? Uh, well, there was the main floor, then there was this kind of basement larder. Well, let's go finish looting the main room, I mean, uh, reallocating resources in the main room. I'm gonna go look outside. What? Okay. I'm a little confused now. There's a ladder downstairs and stairs upstairs. There's the, the floor that you came in on where you got attacked by all the mm -hmm. furniture. And um, there's the downstairs where you're at now where you're stealing all the, the ingredients. What? Not stealing anything. Well, some no people are saying. <laughs> I, I'm definitely not stealing supplies. Well, I, I will go and check the books that were in the living room, I assume. It was only one book. Well, it was one book that attacked you. It was on a little table in between two stuffed uh, chairs. Okay, so there wasn't any other books there? No. Okay. okay. Um, there is a... Uh, a door in the kitchen um, here, and there's a door in the living room here. Okay. I'll walk to the one in the kitchen and listen while they go around and search the room. Okay, go ahead and make a uh, perception check. That was for me. What? Perception. Show me plus one. I hear nothing. Okay. So I will check if the doors are open. Uh, the door does open. And what you see beyond um, appears to be pretty much um, looks like to be a, a pantry of some sort. The There's various food stuff here. Now these aren't as smashed up as the rest of the place. Um... In fact, a lot of the food things in here are intact. Uh, there's various ingredients, various ve uh, vegetables in good condition. Um, you know, barrels of different uh, vegetables, little flat crates of um, like cabbage, carrots, uh, tomato. All this is just piled up in here. Okay. Uh, Dave? Uh, <laughs> you have some food here. All right, let's check this place out. So, I'm glad you're smart enough to give up a uh, claim on it. Uh, ben, ben Doc is going outside. He's going outside? Okay. Yeah, I said I wanted to look around outside. All right, um, go ahead and make a perception check. After 20, 22. All right. So, um, as you're outside, just kind of looking about, um, trying to 
get get a grasp of everything that's going on. You notice uh, through one of the the windows um, over here that you can see um, um, kind of sprawled across the bed, kind of tied at the wrists and ankles is a very bloody, battered man. And further back, uh, in fact, I'm just going to reveal this here. So, and further back here, at this desk here, um, there's a small kind of bat-winged little humanoid that this creature is just kind of perched on the desk, and it looks like he's idly kind of tearing papers and books into little pieces, just like... And, Uh, there's a window, right? Yes, right here. Glass is breakable, right? <laughs> yes, it is. I dive through the window. Okay. Um, make a athletics check. Or acrobatics. Yeah. I'll make let you choose which. A athletics. All right. Fifteen. There's a dwarf that just dove through this glass window. It's kind of slow motion. Y'all hear the glass break coming from another room. It's a guard. I ain't going back. <laughs> Stop right there. Freeze. Oh, no. You hear them yelling, don't you? So... As you say that, Bandok, the little creature kind of looks up at you. And as it looks at you, it just kind of drops what it's holding. And out of a, just out of astonishment, it just kind of blinks for a moment. And then it spins, kind of like in place where it's at. And as it spins, you see its form get smaller and thinner until it just kind of vanishes from view. Uh, did you freeze? <laughs> so, no <Hello>. response. <laughs> uh, I'll go to the desk and take a look at what's on it. All right. Um, let's <laughs> make a uh, make an investigation. Uh, the the books uh, on there they've been pretty much um, shredded. It it would probably take some time to kind of put them back together to make some sense of what they may be about. The, even some of the, the scattered little paperwork. Um, but if you put the time in, it, you can kind of see what they're about. I'll try. I'll try. So being in here, you can see that um, you know. Mostly there's that large bed that kind of dominates the room itself, but um, there are some little bookshelves um, by that writing desk, which was tore apart by the little creature. There are, um, like, back here, there's partially open doors that looks like it leads to a wardrobe, and a little, mm -hmm. uh, like, there's like a little, um, like a little closet. After I figure out what's going on with the desk stuff i'll go to the uh, uh there's I'll a go guy to the, tied up on the bed too who's clearly bloody and beaten oh, oh right <laughs> so uh, uh i'll turn around pieces of paper still in my hands good job you freezed <laughs> you're all right 
<laughs> guy does not answer. He's a, it doesn't look like he's even conscious. Can we get through the window? We're still inside in the other part of the building. Yeah, you do hear the glass shatter. Nobody's went over to investigate. Uh, can I go investigate then? Sure. Um, so, going back by the living room, there's a closed door where you think that the, the sounds may have come from. Found Dirk? Yeah. Uh, which way is in? Oh, there. Okay. Um, did door's you do locked. that? The, the, the door's locked. Oh. Uh, where is the window that he got through? Uh, down over here. He went outside, and he just happened to be walking around, and he noticed, like, through the window what was going on in that room. Uh, okay. And then he jumped through the window. Uh, Bandark, you there? I'm here. Can you open? Freezed. Can you open the doors? I'll, uh, uh... I'll go over to the door and see if I can open it. Yeah, from the inside, you can clearly unlock it. There's, like, a little deadbolt uh, on the, the room there. And once you twist the, the little bolts there, you're able to open the door. Uh, I'll let him in and then point to the guy on the bed. He froze. So good, he's not even answering me. So there's a bloody beaten human that's tied uh, wrist and ankle on the bed, just kind of four post. You think um, you can fight with the misses? Did you do that? Did you tie oh. him to the bed? I don't know, no. It's... I will walk over. He has gag in his mouth, right? No, he's not gagged. He's just his wrists and ankles are tied to the bedpost. He himself, though, is clearly beaten. Uh, he looks kind of bloody, um, and he's not really moving. Can I do medicine check to see to see if he's alive? Sure, can. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead, Jim. <laughs> I love these rolls. Low rolls that we have. He's dead. Oh, well, he's dead. Well, what I'll, do you uh, think is wrong with him? Uh, I'll go over there. Clearly, I'm the scholar of the group. And uh, I'll, I'll roll the medicine. <laughs> okay. Don't roll a one. I'll punch him <laughs> in the face. That's clearly what he needs. He's drunk. Whack! <laughs> like you hit him, and there's a big dwarven-sized fist bruise starting to appear on his cheek. Doesn't wake oh, up. Oh, we he beat. <laughs> Poor guy. Don't I worry. Know, I think it'll be okay. Do I hear him groan when he hits him? He doesn't groan. Um. The head just kind of snaps to the other side, like, just from the force of the bullet. You just see the head rock from one side of the bed to the other. Um, maybe my first assessment was wrong, and I think he may be alive. Don't worry. Going back to life. Yeah. I'm a doctor. How about we cut him free? No, not yet. Let me administer my medications. <laughs> Obo Steve's going to attempt to uh, render aid. Oh God! <laughs> this is great. This is this is great. Seven, not not as bad as I was expecting. <laughs> All right. I know not to use fists. You kick them. See, you kick people and they wake up and they tell them to get it out of your alleyway. You know, with, yeah, your, all right. with Hobo Steve's use of table legs, I kind of picture um, Kung Fu Hustle, where he just kind of lightly bops that guy in the head <laughs> with the table leg. Just boop. 
But if you want to kick him, you most certainly can. Well, that's how it works, you know. You're sitting in the other way. You're well, a... I, I have, I'm, I may have idea, like, and I will walk over and cut him free. Okay. And go back to the kitchen, grab. Is there a cup or something that I could fill with water? Yeah, there's like a little water barrel. Okay, so grab a water bottle, a cup, and just go and splash him in the face. You're right. Go get some of that sauce. <laughs> so we're not eating the poor guy. Well, I meant to wake him up. He woke me up. So well, uh, already brought him back to life. To, to be fair, that healed you. We could try to get him eat it. Is there anything left out of that? Um, there is, but it's cooled down since. So it's the, the whatever magic that empowered its life is gone. But he ate it while there was still some of that in there, so that's why he got that that healing bonus. But I mean, it's still food stuff okay. that you can take. It's just there's nothing special about it anymore. So as you take the water and you throw it on, splash it out. Um, he starts to kind of cough. <coughs> His Your eyes just kind of like he's just kind of looking about, um, just barely moving on the bed. Um, it's about that moment when you hear the strange sound from behind in the other room, the main chamber. There's a flash of bright light appearing. You kind of hear the, like this this arcane energy just kind of coalesce real quick and just with a and the lights just what? And then the uh, like here? Like in the main room. Ah, like, oh, fuck, my map just, okay, here? Yeah, yeah, in the main chamber. And in there, you see, whoop, hang on. If this will let me. G, NPC. Yes. Hey. Should see a name on there. Yeah, I'm done. In. Yes. So you see this, and okay. the, this elven woman with um, blonde hair appear. She's got these kind of, it's like a greenish, uh, greenish robes. that kind of, um, at least the top part of it more, more resembles robes. The bottom part almost is like brownish leather breeches um, with kind of knee high boots. As she appears in there, she sees you in there and she sees the guy on the bed and her hands just kind of light up in you know, little arcane energies. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> For once, this isn't what it looks like. No. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Uh, well, I want to someone don't do what you are doing right now. We came here uh, as asked by the what was that, that guy from the town? Kyle, what was the name of the guy from the town? Um, Mike, Bob, <laughs> um, Uncle Bob. No, Jonathan was the burgomeister that uh, sent you on that. Jonathan, you know, you live practically in his town. He was worried about the noise. We came here, furniture attacked us, and then there was a cake thing, and then we found, which I assume is Gendru, and are you by any chance Endelin? Yes, I am Endelin, so... We're here to check on you. We mean no harm. So why have and you? He may look like hobo. 
I love 40. Why have you tied my husband down and what have you done to him? I cut him. I The bones are off. I did say I cut him free. Oh, apparently. Bandoc well, here is some kind of stuff. I just stuff. cut him free. <laughs> Bandoc hobo. You oh my god, it just appears on the screen. <laughs> you guys are no helping. So this like this little guy. He was he was right here and he points from the desk. He was ripping pages out of books and stuff. That's what with the boy? Panda, what are you talking about? He didn't say anything about no boy. You no, know, I was like is he was in the room when I came in. How did he look like? Uh, I give him a description. Then he, then he started spinning. And he spun. And he spun. And he turned a little, little bitty. And then he was gone. Can I have some of the stuff you're on? Mmm. That's some powerful goods. Well, Miss Sandalini, how about we let you get into your husband and we can talk it out in a moment because i i am no healer and your husband seems to be in pretty bad shape sounds like an imp welcome puck well, damn you what did you call me i don't think she meant you my friend impers I heard of them. Itty bitty little things. That that creature serves a more powerful master. A devil named Wogan Puck. It's an old enemy of mine. Seems like he's decided to surface and cause some trouble. Well Well see against the Town Meyer worries were not without a uh, merit, as you kind of do bring trouble to the townspeople. And and she goes and helps um, Gendru up and starts looking at his wounds, and she starts kind of cleaning him up a bit. And some of the wounds are that isn't blood. Apparently, some of the stuff on him is tomato sauce. Like, the similar stuff that was spraying on you that was hurting you, it, it, he's been covered in that, too. So the blood stains are actually bits of the boiling uh, tomato sauce. Um, okay. So it was like the kinky wax play, but with tomato sauce. <sighs> it was really hot. Well, I'm not going to kink shame you up with that. I've got the burn marks to prove it. So, um, she kind of, you know, she's hugging Gendra right now, trying to care for him. And, well, we don't want to cause these fine folk any problems and. Looks like enemies from my past have come back into my life. We, Gendru, darling, we're going to have to relocate and try to find some place safe while we prepare for what may come. Um, thank you for for checking on um, us and and helping drive off that pesky imp for my husband. Um, she starts going into the the little uh, closet there. And as she's going through the like the little drawers in the wardrobe, um, she pulls out this little box and she opens it up. And it's got these um, like six little small leather pouches with little corks in them um, and she hands them to you um, here uh, this is the um, 
be least I can do to, to thank you um, for saving Gendru. Um, you can let Jonathan know that we'll be leaving um, and we wish him and the community well. Um, but please do not tell him what transpired here. We do not want them to um, fall any more in danger than they might be from this devil. Well, would you make it worth our while to do so? After all, we are here on the job. It wouldn't do for us not to fulfill our duties. I am already giving you six potions here, which are of great value. If the lives of the people mean nothing, then that is on you. But if harm do come to these folks from your careless natures, and her hand kind of sparks up, I will find you. I, and I spark it in there. Well, I'll probably be squatting in your house, so it won't be. Yeah, I, I'm going to have spark off. No. Then Doc approaches uh, the handolin and grabs her hand and shakes it. All right, it, it was great working for you. You can go down to the soldier's hut, and if you fill out the survey, you you can let them know how I did. <laughs> You'll be entered into a contest to win a soldier for a day for, for your kid. So just make sure you put your name and your location in the little glass bowl on the counter and you have a nice day. She gives <laughs> Gendru a potion, feeds it to him, and she begins casting a spell. And as she came in, she leaves Archean Energies teleporting out of the cabin with Gendru. I think we're gonna get a good rating on that survey. We got a new house, bunch of liquidy magic. Bet you can get a lawsuit for this. All good. Let's go tell. Let's go tell Jonathan what happened. Uh, you go do that. I'm going to finish uh, grabbing stuff from my new house. <laughs> <laughs> Hobo Steve properly squatting as Hobo Steve does. Um, all right. Until he burns it down in two weeks. Fair. What, what um, kind of potions did we get even? You, Was it the healing potions? Or? You, you don't know. She didn't tell you what they were. So uh, take two each. But there were six. Yeah, pretty much. Is that there weren't six? No, there are there six. Were. Yeah, so we take two each. All right. Well, I would be guided fairly since you seem to have trouble with numbers, and I give each of them one. Uh, that's not five. It's not two. You be too close, Don't worry, I know math. All right, so everybody pick a number between one to six. Pick a different number. If 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 he isn't giving me a potion, another a second potion, I'm taking it. No, no, everyone gets two. I was just fucking crammed. Okay, so one and six for an arma. Uh, three from Steve. Four and five from Bandit. So two and three for Steve then. Okay, so um, since Steve is staying behind, um, the rest of you are going back to report back to Jonathan, the burgomaster of the mm -hmm. Hamut. Yeah. All right. So treading back, and again, it's only a mile away, so it doesn't take too long to get from there to back. And you've already, you know the footpath that you found before with your survival, so it's not hard to find the main trail and get back to the, the town. Um, as you do so, Jonathan's um, still uh, doing some of his duties, and you see him at, uh, I wouldn't really call it an inn, but it's more of a, like a B&B. &B. Um, oh, um, Bex, that didn't take too long. Um, you look a little um, 
dirty. Um, I hope uh, those two didn't give you too much trouble. Um, so what, what's oh, the news? Well, well <laughs> the stench smells and all that stuff, it was because they were preparing to move out at short notice, you could say. They were having acid in the kitchen. So don't worry, everything is fine. And they are gone as far as you should worry. So Yeah, we had some problems. There was there was a poker in the living room and then there was a book. Yeah. And then there was uh, some curtains don't in worry. the window. It was done. And in the I kitchen... smack him on the head. I <laughs> smack him on the Bing. Ow. Everything is okay now. I was glad to hear. It sounds like you had quite um an interesting visit with the two. Um, well, well, he knew magic. I, I will let the uh, good townsfolk know uh, the, the good news here. And uh, as uh, promised here, and he, he pulls out uh, these little coins here, starts counting them out in front of you. He pays you each uh, 10 gold each here. Um, I don't know where your your, your other compatriot is, but... Um, uh, he's still checking if the house is free of the pest and th but the mages are gone so i will take care of his share all right well um good uh fine folk of hamut uh they we thank you for your your services um feel free to stay as uh, long as you like on our little uh slice of heaven here in tour but um this is good i, I will let the townsfolk know that if they shall be uh, happy. Glad everything worked Thank out fine. Thank you. I told them about the survey and the little glass ball where you put your <laughs> name in. I'm expecting great things. It's a pleasure doing business uh, with you, Bandok. Um, well, I, I have to get back to uh, my duties here. I still have uh, some things I need to get done, but... Um, Thank you again for your service. And he just uh, takes the rest of his uh, little coins that he um, paid you with, and um, he goes back to setting up this little B and B and preparing to make his statement to the rest of the townsfolk. Um, so just think about how he's going to present it to them. So um, with that. Um, just for, for levity's sake here, uh, the potions that you got weren't, uh, you know, they could have been used in a thing if you found them earlier, but, uh, basically potion to give you advantage on strength checks, one to give you advantage on dexterity checks, uh, cure wounds potion, um, a resist, uh, fire potion, a potion of jump, uh, and basically a potion that gives you dark vision. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had for the the uh, yeah. adventure that was thrown together in less than thirty minutes. <laughs> I guess uh, he would share that ten coins that he would he get, he got for Steve with Bandok, and they would basically part their way. Okay. Does does Bandok get a good review on the survey? <laughs> Well, um, I mean, yeah, as five. far as from um, Gendru and Andalin's concerned, I mean, they don't really partake in the survey, but the, the people of, the hum, <laughs> of Hamlet uh, do are, are very happy with what's going on because you went over there and you dealt with the, um, the wizard folk, you know. Yeah, I punched them. Punched them in the face. You literally did. You punched one in the face. So, well, guys. Um, I was this close to casting Chaos Ball there. It would be very fun if it started to jump around with one enemy. <laughs> it, it, there is one thing I need. Got? I need to roll real quick. All right. Seven days later, the house burns down. Steve running off with as much <laughs> as Harry. Nice. 
Very nice. Well, um, that is going to be uh, it for the one shot here. Um, so tomorrow we do have our regular Taldori uh, campaign where uh, Narva, who played uh, Shustu today, uh, is partaking in. And next Saturday we'll have uh, hopefully a continuation of our normal Taldori campaign in that kind of split Taldori world. So join us for that if you want to see any of those 5th edition games. But I have been Biofreak. Thank you for watching. Um, be safe. And until next time, happy gaming. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. <laughs>